Hello everyone, uh, here today to share with you a bug that I found, um, maybe if it actually fixes the issue, then that would be good. If it doesn't fix the issue, <clears throat> well then we tried, right? So first of all, <clears throat> I got a virus through a program called Soft Ether. it was a VPN. Um, I scoured the web, looked for something that seemed reliable, and found that, and it worked at a cost. So today I'm going to go ahead and go through a thread that I posted and the agonizing time I spent fixing it. <laughs> um, it did take me about 24 hours to get it all sorted away, figure out exactly what was causing it and remove it. Uh, in that time, I blue screened about, I want to say about 30 times. Now. Windows keeps track of all the errors, but it doesn't keep track of all the blue screens. People don't realize this. The blue screen of death, it only holds it for so many times after you restart your system. So, unfortunately, you know, the original uh, the original show showing of the, of the file is not going to be in the video. Because I've restarted my system, I've fixed the issue. However, since this is, you know, a raw recording... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you real quick uh, how to fix this issue. Now, for those of you that that haven't seen this issue yet, um, I posted this last night. The ntoskrnl.exe. It's a file that utilizes your networking, from what I can understand. Um, or not your networking, I'm sorry, your drivers. And when something goes wrong, say you installed a driver or something actually was changed in a driver, this program will actually cause a blue screen. I'm actually kind of happy this blue screened me, although I'm not obviously happy, but you know what I mean. Uh, because of this blue screening, I actually found the issue. Now, I kept getting a blue screen, and let me scroll down here and I'll show you, the first of which showed the error and the operating system and everything right here. Uh, this is the actual error, error code that I received when I got it. Now, it didn't actually show me what the issue was originally. Like, this is through Event Viewer. So, if you if you go into Event Viewer, if you ever blue screen, this is a good way to check. Um, go, to secu uh, go to System on Windows Logs. And give it a second, it'll go ahead and populate. This is the first line that I look into whenever I have a blue screen to figure out what the cause is. Let me give it a second. Okay, as you can see, it says information, warning, you know, this is just normal stuff. Uh, what you're looking for is things like this, like error and critical. Like if I go over here and I filter current log, I go critical and then error and press OK. It'll actually pull up all of the dates. It'll give me an event ID telling me the error code that it was. Now, uh, I'm not going to get into the distributed com because that's a pretty much a benign error that just happens because Windows is incredibly stupid. Um, yeah. It won't allow access to a file it owns. Imagine that. Anyway, right here I started looking through and I saw these ID, these event IDs. I was like, okay, well, this one was a critical, and you know, it's just, the system didn't restart. You can go into your details and stuff like that, and that's pretty much it. Uh, that's how you get to to see it. First of all, you can go to details to look at it more detail and give you more information. I'm not going to go into that though, because that shows more computer information. Anyway, this was the error log that I pulled up, and I pulled it up through who crashed. So this is another program. If you don't want to go through all that, you can use this instead. It's free. Uh, who crashed? You just download it, and it'll go through the past dump files. Every time your system crashes, it creates a DM .dmp file. It's a dump file. Usually, you can't read it unless you have some way of reading it. You know, like this, for example. Um, this basically just gives a gist of the information. You know, it says, "Okay, this is the program that crashed right here." The NTOS. Okay, now. It said that this was the issue and that it was a system service exception, which is what the blue screen says. System service exception. System is closed down. It didn't actually give me this file. It didn't tell me this is what was causing it. It just told me on the blue screen system service exception. So, 
once I knew that that was it, I did some research and I found out that that program, you know, really shouldn't really be removed. It's just a program that tells you that the drivers haven't are having an issue. They're not properly installed. They're corrupt. Something else happened. Uh, so after some digging, I found some links. Now the first page, I'm going to link all of these. Uh, the first way that you can find more information over the blue screen is blue screen view. I'll link this to you, all of these in the description. Uh, so this right here is the program that I used. And if I pull it up now, you can see it says NT, like it shows it, you click on it and it'll show pink. That's the one that or reddish pink, but that's the one that's causing the issue. Uh, mine actually said it wasn't that one. It said this one and then it had another one underneath it. Now, normally it doesn't show this other one. So this is how I got it to pop up. So what I did was I went through a, I went through a program and I, or went through a forum and I found this tracking down misbehaving drivers. So what, it, what you have to do is it's very simple. Make sure you're an administrator account for all this, by the way, do you click on start? And you say verifier. And it brings this up. Now you're just going to follow the instructions on this page. Create dump settings for, for code development. You click next. And then you're going to go through this and you're going to check all of them. Except for the ones that he stated, which is the DLL compliance. I think there's actually like two of those. The DDI compliance, these two, I didn't check. And then the other one, which is randomized low resource. So that is right here. So check all of, all of these ones besides the ones I checked, checked all the other ones, leave these ones unchecked. Okay. And I'm just going to cancel here cause I don't want to do this, but it, there's pictures here for it. Uh, then you go ahead and you click next, you go to driver names from a list. What this is going to do is it's going to tell your computer or your windows. Uh, I want to, I want you to go ahead and take these drivers and force them to try to error out. And what's going to happen is if it blue screens, usually the first or second, you know, somewhere in there, the first one to, to give you a, a hiccup is the one that's going to blue screen you. Uh, now, keep in mind, if you're running Windows 10 and this becomes a problem, you may happen with, with what happened with me. You'll go into, uh, you'll end up having to boot up, and as soon as it boots, bam, it'll crash immediately. There's no Windows. Uh, what you do is he even gives you a rundown later on. What you do is you just let it crash two or three times, and it will pop up with a screen saying, "Would you like to repair?" or "Would you like to restore previous versions?" I can't remember which one. You're gonna click cancel. And then you're going to go through the, the information there and you're going to basically just go into soft, uh, not safe mode. So once you get into safe mode, then you'll be able to, uh, do what you need to do, which is remove the registry keys that I'm about to show you and things like that. Anyway, so I found out that it was called ndisrd.sys. Now this guy will, this, this, this link right here tells you how to find it. It's in your system 32 folder in drivers. It's a system file. Uh, now, the program that caused this, like I said, was soft ether. If you've installed a VPN or something and this issue is causing you to blue screen constantly, I mean like you're trying to game, it crashes, you load too many windows and your Chrome, it crashes, you know, it, it doesn't really have a specific cause. It just crashes a lot because it's a driver exception. And the computer says, oh no, there's a driver exception. If we keep running this, it's gonna do something on the system that's gonna make things corrupt. We need to stop it. And that's what a blue screen is. So then it blue screens. So I found out that this was the cause. After going through this, uh, I utilized this to, to actually you know, go through and see if it had a process. It doesn't actually have a process. You're gonna have to go into safe mode and you're gonna have to delete the registry keys linked to this. You're going to also have to delete uh, the the dot s uh, the dot sys file this one um, when you actually get to it. You won't be able to delete it unless you're in regular safe mode. I'm not talking about safe mode with networking. I'm talking about safe mode. So once you go into safe mode, it's not being used. The program's not running with it, so it can't say, "Oh, well, I'm running with a program. You can't delete me." So that's. I went in there and I went ahead and deleted it. Now, 
before you do this, before you delete that, that .sys file, keep in mind, and please, if you get the chance, download your network drivers. Because this is pretty much going to delete your network drivers, and it's going to cause a lot of headache if you don't. You're going to need to reinstall your network drivers because this partially is installed in your network drivers. So keep that in mind. Before you do anything, get that driver. So anyway, I went through this and I found out that it could be used with malware. There's a lot of ads on the site, but this, you know, went through a couple of things on it. The program he provides uh, to delete it on next reboot for this does not work at all. Don't don't get it. It's pointless. Uh, then I found out that this is what it is: Trojan interrupt or inter update. Now the thing is that this is a this is a Trojan. It was back in 2009. This one's slightly different, so it may be a different variable or a new version of Trojan. Uh, but as of this date, it's new for me. Uh, so anyway, what I did was when you when you get to that, you go here. Now it it doesn't actually say netfilter.exe. Mine, I was just looking for the the one the NDISRD. So I went in here, current version run, see if I could find it. If I found this folder name or anything after run that contained the sys file right here, I deleted it, period. Um, I also went in through the HKEY local machine system, control set 001, service, and in there it did have that file, the ND. Now, just use some common sense. If it's not actually located there, or it has a, another file that, that says it just, just you know, pick the one that has this file in it, the sys file, and delete it. I didn't take chances with, just, with deleting different parts of it. I destroyed the key entirely. I just took it off because I didn't want it replacing itself. Um, that's the bad thing about having any kind of viruses in your registry. If you leave any kind of uh, information behind, it could repopulate and just, be, you know, pop right back up. That's the problem with some viruses. That's, what they, that's how they recreate themselves. That's why it's called a virus it's not easy to get rid of so this page has the information of where you'd go to look through it um, I did not delete the uh, the NDIS soppy DLL file uh, because it didn't seem to have any impact on my computer uh, I'm not actually having any issues right now at all however the issue that that I did get rid of was the dot sys file that's the main one. Now you can delete both of these if you want, um, because at the end of this, you may just get it back anyway, the corrected version, if there is one. Uh, so I went through those and that's how I got it. So I have all of this listed in, in this, this link, this post, which is what I'm going to post for, you know, for you guys after this. But if you're having an issue with your computer, this would be the best way to go about it if you want to figure out if it's caused by a file that you've downloaded. Now, the NTO, this file, or this right here, can be caused by a RAM issue, and it can be caused by data corruption, but it can also be caused by drivers. I did all the testing, I found out that it was, you know, of course, drivers. So, note to the wise, just be careful when you get stuff. Oh, and, uh, most virus scanners, uh, not, not most of them, but some of them will not pick this up when you get that program. Uh, and even if it, even if it doesn't pull it up, you know, be very careful because, you know, there's viruses out there that don't pull up and don't populate because they're not in the listing for the program. So I think that that is about it, uh, for the, for the fix on this. But as I said, this is a really raw video. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and take a minute right now to just say, you know, thank you for watching this video. I hope it helps. I know I rambled a little bit, but like I said, it's a raw video. So it hasn't been edited or anything. Um, I can't think of any other possible ways of resolving it other than this now. I can't think of any other possible things I forgot. So anyway, um, thank you for watching. I hope this helped. And maybe you learn some things that can help you in the future when determining what errors or what issues, you know, pop up on your computer. So if you like the video, then please look at my stream, uh, look at some of my videos, see if you like them. 
Uh, keep in mind, it is mature, so there is cursing. Uh, quite a lot of it sometimes. But anyway, uh, you guys have a great day, and I hope this helps. And keep in mind, this isn't just for soft ether. It is for any kind of program that may cause this issue. Um, oh, there's one thing I forgot. Uh, I have a thumb drive. <sighs> right here. I went ahead and put the Windows installer on this so I could repair my computer. And I'm glad I did because it allowed me to get my... When I went to the repair, it allowed me to get my registry back, everything. So if you're still having an issue, you could always just do that, you know, get the download tool, put it on here, you know, Windows download tool, it's very simple, Windows 10. Uh, and uh, good luck with your, with your future endeavors. I hope that this video has helped and that it will fix some of the problems and maybe help you find problems in the future. Have a great day.